Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course Aspects of Biochemical Engineering. Uh, in the last uh, lecture, I tried to discuss the uh, kinetics of substrate utilization, product formation and biomass production of microbial cells. And uh, the process that we considered that is the batch process and also we, <coughs> we discussed the monod equation and monod equation is considered as a unstructured and unsegregated model and I, I, I try to explain what do you mean by structured model, what do you mean by segregated model and uh, obviously that unstructured and unsegregated model is considered as a ideal model, it is not a real model. Real model will be structured and segregated model. And uh, then we discuss uh, about that how you monitor the uh, concentration of the cells and I told you two type of cells we have, one is called unicellular cell, another is uh, what we call filamentous cells or multicellular cells. In case of unicellular cell, number is proportional to mass, so concentration of the cells can be expressed both uh, either by mass per unit volume or number of cell per unit volume in case of unicellular cell. Now, in case of uh, in case of uh, fungi or multicellular cell or filamentous cells, always we shall have to express the concentration of cell which is used for explaining the enzymatic reaction kinetics and we discuss the what are the limitations uh, of this equation of, uh, that you know I told you that uh, mu is finite when s is finite, mu tends to mu max when s tends to infinity but it does not explain what will happen to mu when s tends to 0 and in addition to that there are two other limitations of this Michaelis Menten equation that it does not discuss the death of the cells because we know any kind of living population always there will be growing of the cells and death of the cells. So, death of the cells is not uh, is considered in case of monod equation and in addition to that there is substrate inhibition and product inhibition as per microbial system is concerned that also uh, we do not consider. And then we discuss about the life cycle of the cells, I told you that life cycle plays very important role because the reason is that uh, in process we come across into the lag phase, log phase, stationary phase and and the death phase. Every phase has a significance as for example, lag phase we consider as the acclimatization phase, log phase is the active phase and stationary phase is the starvation phase. And in case of death, death phase that is you know the organisms are dying phase. So, you know that, so why it is important the reason is that whenever we prepare any kind of inoculum the or you know culture for, for any kind of fermentation process we shall have to inoculate uh, in between the mid log phase to late log phase. That is the culture we should prepare. Now, in addition that to that, we discuss other different type of growth models that we recommended by different type of scientists, and also we, we discuss about the substrate inhibition and product inhibition, and also lutecking pirate model and part model. Now today I am going to discuss that how uh, this in the CSTS system or when CSTS means continuous start tank reactor. When continuous start tank reactor we use in the biological system we call it chemostat process. So how in the chemostat process we can we can use the living cells. So today's lecture will be mostly concentrated on that. Now, if you look at that, uh, this is a continuous process. We we have already, I already told you that we have two type of process. 
we have uh, one is your CSTR, what we call chemostat, another is the plug flow reactor. Now, chemostat basically, this is simple a reactor, this is like this, and uh, so there is a continuous inflow and outflow. And plug flow reactor is like this, that you know, there is a tube, tubular reactor and liquid coming one in and product is going out. Both are continuous reactor. Now here we have we have uniformity in the reaction mixture that by using the mechanical starter here there is no starter. Not only that during the movement there should not be any axial mixing. Radial mixing is permissible not the axial mixing. Now press media is continuously introduced into the at a constant rate, so we pour, we take it to fresh media here, and culture volume is kept constant in the uh, by continuous renewable of the culture. Now, suppose F is the flow rate, now, and we here also we shall have to maintain the flow rate F. Now, F suppose this is F and this is F2, and if F1 is more than F2, then what will happen? That uh, your volume of the reactor that keep on increasing that is undesirable and if uh, if uh, f1 is uh, less than f2 then volume of the liquid that will keep on decreasing with respect to time so this is the problem now when f1 equal to f2 then and only then the volume of the reactor will remain constant am i right so this is uh, this is the significance of this particular thing then we have a single nutrient control growth we can, we, what you call, now I told you the media comprises of n number of components. We have carbon source, we have nitrogen source, we have minerals, and so we have vitamins. Am I right? So, you know that everything has, has some contribution to the living system. Carbon has three contribution. It goes for the cell mass formation, it goes for the, the source of energy, and it goes for the product formation. In nitrogen, mostly it is used for the growth of the cell. Minerals and vitamin, they mostly contribute for as a cofactor in the, in the metabolic pathway, uh, the enzymes involved in the metabolic pathway. Now, uh, so if you want to study that what is the effect of this component individually, we can easily study with the help of continuous systems. Just we can change the concentration here here we, we change the concentration immediately we can find the changes here. The dilution rate that is the rate of addition of phase media determined by the specific growth rate that is D equal to F by V. F is the flow rate and V is the because the D is equal to mu I shall show you in the next slide uh, dilution rate um, because, uh, because here I want to point out one thing that uh, when we study our life cycle, this is the x, this is the cell mass concentration, and this is time. So we have this kind of that you know life cycle we have. Now suppose in case of Baker's fermentation process, we we are interested to operate it in the in the log. This is the log phase. Am I right? Because log phase we will get the maximum rate of cell mass formation. So um, so that we can maintain by controlling the dilution rate by d equal to mu. That next slide, I hope you will get that information. Now, the continuous growth, uh, cell growth using the chemostat, as substrate continuously added and feed continuously removed, a quasi steady state uh, is uh, developed. Now, what I want to, want to mean here, that uh, in the chemostat process, that uh, 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 quasi steady state conditions means it is not exactly steady state, it is tends to steady state. Now, suppose I told you, you can remember whenever we operate any kind of continuous process, first we operate in a batch mode and when your rate of cell mass growth is maximum, then we start feeding the uh, media continuously and take out the, uh, that, uh, you know, fermented media uh, continuously. So this is like this, F is the flow rate, S0 is the initial substrate concentration, X0 equal to 0 when you have sterile feed. Sterile feed means there is no uh, cell present in the media and P0 means 
no product present in the media. So, here you will get this is the A fluorate, S is the substrate concentrated A x and P. Now, this, uh, this we can have under steady state condition and steady state condition uh, CO2 steady state condition is possible when and only when we operate the system for infinite period of time. Now, how we can do the cell balance? Now, we have the uh, we have the equation that rate of input plus cell generation equal to rate of output accumulation of the cell and cell death. Now, here under steady state condition that f into x, x 0 is the cell that is input in the system. Cell generation is that this is equal to what I can write d x by d t into b. Am I right? Now, d x by d t equal to mu into x. So, I can write this is mu into v x. So, this is exactly what we have written here that mu x into v and this is the output f, f into x because under steady state condition x is the series to substrate concentration and this is the rate of uh, uh, cell uh, that is the accumulation of the cell. Now, this will be equal to 0 and in under steady state condition and this is the uh, this is the rate of death of the cell. So, quasi steady state conditions um, the rate of accumulation that we should be equal to 0 assuming the death of the cells is negligible and x 0 equal to 0. Now, this above equation I can write that uh, this is so this is equal to 0 and I assume this is also equal to 0. So, the what will happen mu x b uh, equal to f into x. So, x x will cancel am I right. So, we can write this is mu equal to v by f mu equal to v by f means mu equal to d. So, so what I was telling in the last uh, uh, previously that by simple by controlling dilution rate it is possible to maintain a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time. So, this is very very that is that is the advantage of this uh, chemostat process. Now, uh, in co compared to the batch process we can we can refer that in the batch process this was the major drawback. Why? In the batch process you cannot hold a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time, but in the continuous system you can operate a particular phase of growth for infinite period of time. So, you can get maximum amount of cell mass formation. Now, uh, if you if you do the substrate balance, the previously it was cell mass balance. Now, if you do the substrate balance, then again we can write rate of substrate input plus rate of substrate generation, rate of substrate output consumption and accumulation. So, we can write f into x 0 is substrate generation means the uh, substrate cannot be generated in the, the reactor. So, this we can assume to be 0, this is the substrate output, this is the rate of formation, this is the degradation of the substrate, this will be plus and under steady state condition this will be equal to 0. So, we can write f into s 0 into f s s equal to v into d s. Now, <coughs> d s d s by d t what we can write d s by d t we can write d s by d x into this is equal to d x by d t am I right? We can write like this. Now, d x by d s we can write this is 1 by x by s into d x by d t. This is this is what what is written here and and then 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 this is this is what, what has come this is 1 by and d x by d t equal to what? this is mu into x s s. What is this? x s s stands for? Steady state cell mass concentration. x s s stands for the x s s is the steady state cell mass concentration. So, this equation we can write in this form d into s 0 minus s s equal to 1 by y x s s mu into x 0. So, this is this is how we can we can we can uh, now, we, we can develop the correlation between the steady state substrate concentration and the cell mass steady state cell mass concentration. Now, next is a very important thing is that how this dilution rate affects the steady state condition. So, this uh, let me explain that. Now, let us assume this is uh, this is we have this is the start tank reactor am I right? This is the this is the start tank reactor and, and, and 
So, substrate is coming this way and product is going this way. So, here F is the flow rate and this liquid volume we can consider V. V is called the liquid volume, what you call walking volume, because we assume that reaction take place only in the liquid phase, you know, it does not take place in the free space. So, this is called walking volume. So, uh, this is also F. So, what we can we can do? We can I told you F by D, F by V, uh, what is the F by V, what is the unit? This is volume per unit time, am I right? And this is what? This is volume. So, this volume volume will cancel and this will be time inverse. This is this is equal to dilution rate. This is equal to dilution rate. So, this is dilution rate you can you can control you can change the dilution rate as you because V is the V is constant. So, if you want to increase the dilution rate you just increase the the flow rate volumetric flow rate of the liquid then you can change that dilution rate. Now, if you see the correlation between D versus you X S S and S S S. What is the X S S? I told you this is the steady state cell mass concentration and SSS is the steady state substrate concentration. Now, this is steady state cell mass concentration and this is actually the steady state substrate concentration. This is SSS and this is XSS. So, you know that here you can see that at different dilution rate, this is D 1 this might be 0, this is D 2, this is D 3, this is D 4, this is D 5, this is D 6, but here, here what is happening? Here there is no cell present in the reactor, X S is equal to 0, am I mean, right? X S is equal to 0. What you call? We consider this as a cell washout. What do you mean by washout of the cell? Because there is no cell present in the reactor because they do your, your total reactor is free from the cells. Now, if there is no cell present in the reactor, we, what will happen? The S 0 that is S 0 here and here also will be S 0 because no cell, no reaction take place. So, this is exactly this point will be S 0. So, this uh, corresponding point is the, uh, the this is called D washout, D washout. At deep washout, there is no cell present in the reactor. Now, this is the major problem that we have in case of CSA, that chemostat process. Now, a question question may be raised that why this happens? This happens due to the say, two different reasons. One, I can explain that you know we know the generation time. What is generation time? Generation time is generation time. Generation time is the time required for cell division, cell division, time required for cell division. This is the time required, am I right? For cell division. So, you know the suppose you are passing the cell in the what is 1 by D? 1 by D is called HRT. What is HRT? HRT is called hydraulic retention time. Am I right? So, what is hydraulic retention time? That means, how long you allow your liquid to reside in the reactor? How long that you know and why it is important? Because that is the time of reaction because the time you are allowing uh, the liquid research in the gear that is the time of reaction. Now, if your generation time and uh, hydraulic retention time is uh, less than that the generation time what will happen? Before cell multiplies you are taking out the cell from the reactor. So, there is no cell present in the reactor. Another way it can be explained that suppose this is a continuous reactor and you are passing one end like this. So, if suppose that here rate of growth of the cell d x by d t and rate of cell mass that is going out from this system 
that is uh, that uh, if if the rate of cell that is going out the system is more than rate of growth of the cell then what will happen the cell mass concentration in the reactor keep on decreasing and a time will come when there is no cell present in the reactor am i right so let us see that uh, here what we have written this is uh, that we have already seen this is mu equal to d when uh, when mu equal to d under steady state conditions and the sterile feed what is sterile feed sterile feed means here x0 equal to 0 the input there should not be any cell present in the in the feed that is why we call it sterile feed then then and only the mu equal to d this is equal to this is mono equation we know mu mu max s case now previously we have done this uh, that you uh, know the substrate balance and in the substrate balance we have this equation in this equation if we if we put the value of mu this is mu max s k s plus s then we consider this as a chemostat model this considered as a this is called ke monod chemostat model the one monod chemostat model is uh, how it is done because we when we have the uh, this substrate balance or cell mass balance and in the substrate balance and cell mass balance and when we put the monod equation then we consider that a monod chemostat model the same thing we can we, we can we can work out in case of uh, cell mass uh, balance also we can we can we can we can find out that in cell mass balance also we can write the monod chemostat model now let me show you how you can do that uh, suppose this is a reactor and this is the input and there is output now we have this reactor this is f this is x0 this is f into xss and this is uh, this is also xss and this is sss am i right this is v so if you write the cell mass balance under steady state condition under steady state condition what will happen that the rate of accumulation equal to zero rate of input is f into x0 am i right what is the rate of generation of the cells that will be dx by dt into v and what is rate of output f into x0 x not x0 f into x this is the rate of that uh, and then uh, then we can write this is uh, uh, and rate of accumulation obviously that will be equal to zero now if you divide this uh, both the side by v uh, this is v is there we can divide by v then what will have ha have this be the a by v equal to d d into x0 plus what is this mu into x ss what is this vv will cancel and this is will be d into x am i right now this is equal to x into x0 plus mu equal to mu max ss ks plus sss into xss am i right equal to this is ss xss this is equal to d into xss now this equation also we call it monod chemostat model monod chemostat model so we have we have two monod chemostat model one is with respect to with uh, with respect to uh, with respect to uh, substrate balance another is with respect to cell mass balance now here the interesting thing is that that uh, the steady state so substrate concentration and steady state uh, cell mass concentration we can easily find out now we have this equation am i right now if you look at this equation that is mu equal to d equal to mu max s s s k s plus s s s am i right so this is equal to i can write d k s plus d s s s equal to mu max into s s s so i can so what i can write s s s equal to d k s equal to mu max minus d so we can easily find out the steady state substrate concentration the once we find out steady state substrate concentration we can find out x value how we can find out x value why we know why x by s equal to x ss minus x0 
this is equal to divided by s by s, s s s. Am I right? So, <coughs> so what we can write? This is x s s is equal to x zero plus y x by s into s zero minus s s s. So, if we put the value of s s s here, what we have done here, we can find out x s s value. This we can easily do that. So, this is exactly what we have done here. You see that you know this is the x equal to a x equal to this, so we can easily find out. Then if we multiply it by a d, there is dilution rate, then what is d into x? This is d into x is equal to productivity because already uh, d into x equal to we can write mu into x and this is equal to d x by d t and the d x by d t means gram of cell produced per unit time. This is called productivity. So, so the, this we can write in this form. Now, when you when you, there is a very interesting thing, when you plot that uh, d versus d versus d into x, d into x means d x by d t am I right? Rate of cell mass formation and this uh, what is the plot? Plot is like this. Now, in this plot here, what is this? This is equal to d x, this is maximum, am I right? So, what is d x maximum? Then, at this point we call it d max. So, what is d max? d max means so when the dilution rate at which the rate of rate of cell mass growth, cell mass formation is maximum. So this is this is what we can we can we can find out now here um, here in this plot if you look at like this so this is dx am I right this is into dx and then d so here I can write d dx by d d this should be equal to zero this is Plato am I right so this is exactly we, we uh, if if you look at here. Here we have we have this d x equal to y x by s d s 0 this. Now, if we differentiate this with respect to with respect to d d d if we do the, then we will be coming across this equation. We will come across this equation and uh, for why the d x uh, this is d and d d s 0. this is the equation and if you differentiate d then it will be 1 this is a 0 and if we d d square and this the two term is there so this, this will be equal to this uh, this value and then we put this uh, that uh, d at uh, when mu d stands for d equal tends to d max d d by d x that will be equal to 0 then if you put these conditions we will we'll solve this and we find this equation, this equation we find and uh, and finally, we will uh, we'll come across this equation mu equal to mu equal to mu max s k s by plus s. So, so this is the, the what is, so this is what is this d max? d max is the dilution rate when you will get the maximum amount of rate of cell mass production. Now, what is the pr maximum productivity? Now, I, if I ask you, what is maximum productivity? Now, uh, the productivity is usually expressed mass per unit volume. Maximum productivity is when the rate of cell mass formation is maximum. So, at d max, your rate of growth of the cell is maximum. Now, at this, at that particular situation. Uh, that whatever cell mass concentration is there, so but we have d max and x s s at that uh, condition. If you multiply it by that uh, uh, corresponding steady state cell mass concentration, then we will get the maximum cell mass productivity. So, maximum cell productivity we can easily calculate. So, this is exactly and from that uh, we can find out the maximum cell mass concentration also x uh, since the this is the d max 
uh, that the so we can easily find out that uh, maximum cell mass concentration and uh, this is how we can solve in this form final form will be coming in this i told you this is uh, d into x max uh, or you know this is uh, this is we considered as a d max if you have d max we have x max and if you multiply that and this equation correspond to the maximum maximum uh, cell mass productivity the maximum cell productivity can be calculated with the help of this equation now <clears throat> that here uh, we 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 give you some graph but what i have shown you that uh, this is the dx this is the x value and this is the substrate concentration am i right and this this correspond to x0 am i right so so what is the s0 where at d wash out that uh, s value will be s0 then then what will be the d value at d wash out value d wash out equal to d mu max into s0 k s plus s0 so um, we 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 have seen that this is equal to d max am i right this is equal to d max and this is the d wash out now when we want to produce more cell we are interested to operate the system at d max but you know that industry how we operate the flow rate by controlling the valve now if we increase the valve little bit more the uh, actually operator they do this work but when we open little bit more there is every possibility that d max can meet the d wash out situation so this is the this is the major problem that we have with the um, biochemical industry that uh, so so uh, this problem can be overcome by two ways either you recycle the cell and or you immobilize cell on the solid matrix this is the two i shall come back now if you look at this that correlation between d max d wash out and mu max usually the correlation is like this d max you can see this is d max d max it will less than d wash out am i right but d wash out usually equal to or less than mu max value this is the this is the correlation shift that we have and uh, if we want to uh, now we have shown you already how in the batch process we can find out the uh, the, the you know value of uh, cell growth kinetics now in case of uh, chemostat also it is possible to find out the cell growth kinetics if you write this equation in the form of line wave back plot then what we have to have do we have to plot 1 by d versus 1 by d because all everything is constant what is this this equal to y equal to c plus mx am i right so if you plot one one is here one with so you will be having straight line the intercept will give you the value one by mu max and the slope will give you the ks by mu max so whatever mu max value you have you put it here so we will get the, get the value of ks so it is in the so in the chemostat process also it is possible to find out the kinetic constant now what are the advantages we have with the chemostat process that log phase can be operated for infinite period of time the effect of growth limiting substrate on the cell growth and morphology of the cell can be easily monitored because i told you that cell comprises is comprised in number of components suppose we want to find out the effect of individual component on the on the particular process that easily we can find it out several plant metabolites is usually produced during the transition of phases which can be operate easily operated in the chemostat simple by controlling dilution rate we can have 2 and 4 that movement of the phases so we can have more metabolite formation and results obtained are reliable and reproducible major disadvantage of the chemostat is the cell washout problem and growth over the long period uh, <clears throat> can cause mutation and contamination this is the major problem of this process now as i told you that uh, this drawback that you know cell washout that is the drawback can be overcome by two ways one is called chemostat with cell mass recycling and whole cell immobilization system this i, I will discuss in my couple of lectures thank you very much